Okay, so this is video 1B of factoring, factoring by, uh, solving quadratics by factoring. Hi. Okay, this is video 1B of uh, solving quadratics by factoring. Uh, so I'm going to teach you a method of factoring called decomposition. Um, and we're just, just going to do it for factoring x squared plus bx plus c. So quadra uh, trinomials where the a value is 1, which has got 1a squared, because it's a little bit easier. And then in the next, in 2b, I'll show you how to do it if you've got a different number of a squares. Okay, so I've got three factoring questions here. Um, the first one, factor x squared plus 8x plus 15. So here's this method. Uh, it's kind of cute how it works out. It's uh, kind of a clever little thing. So here's what you do. Uh, if you want to factor this, you can also just do this by trial and error, which is what I do in uh, video 1a. But if you're looking for a method that will always work here, um, you can write this down. We need to find a sum, a product, and then two numbers that have that sum and that product. So remember that a sum is the answer to an addition, so two things that add up to something. And a product is the answer to multiplication, so two numbers are going to multiply to something. Um, and the sum is going to be the b value. The sum is going to be the b value. So the sum that we're looking for is 8 here. And the product that we're going to look for is a times c. So it's going to be 1 times 15, which is 15. Okay, so we need to look for two numbers that add up to 8 and multiply to 15. And if you think it's easier to go through the things that multiply to 15, so there's 1 times 15, that doesn't add up to 8, 1 and 15. And then 3 times 5, and 3, three times 5 is 15, and 3 plus 5 is 8. So those are the numbers. Okay. Um, and then there's a nice, so we'll do this nice little thing here, where we take this 8x, and we're going to break that up into 3x and 5x. You can do it in whichever order you like. Okay? So I just took my 8x, and I wrote that as 3x plus 5x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each half of this. And I'm going to take out the largest common factor from each part. So from this x squared plus 3x, um, the largest common factor, they both have a factor of x. So then I'm going to write x times what will give me x squared plus 3x. So x times something is x squared, so that'll be an x. And x times something will be 3x, so that will be 3. Okay, so that's the first part. And then the second part, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to group those together and say, what's the largest common factor there? So they no longer have a factor of an x because the 15 doesn't have any, it's not, uh, it doesn't have a factor of x. But they do have a common factor of 5 because they're both divisible by 5. So here we'll take out a factor of 5. So 5 times what will be 5x? That'll be x. And 5 times what is 15? That's going to be 3. Okay. Um, here, that was where, like, if you look at this, something kind of magical happened. Um, because both of these factors in here are x plus 3. And if you do this right, you will always, always, always get these two factors the same. And it's really interesting to think about why that happens. Um, but in the meantime, if you don't get that, then go back and check your work, because you made a mistake somewhere. So, now the question is, how many x plus 3s do we have? We have a whole lot of x plus 3s. Um, so we have x, x plus 3 is here, and we have 5, x plus 3 is here. So altogether we have x and then 5 more, so x plus 5, x plus 3 is. And now I've got that factored. Okay, if we wanted to check that we'd factored correctly, we could multiply this out. So x times x is x squared. x times 5 plus 3 times x, so that's 5x and 3x is 8x. And then 3 times 5 is 15. So that's correct. Okay, uh, next one here, I've got x squared minus 10x minus 24. So instead of writing out the full words here, sum product numbers, I'm just going to use a little shorthand. I'll just put s for sum, p for product, and numbers, n for numbers. So, 
Um, the sum that we're going to use is going to be, it's the B term. Maybe I should, maybe let's just write that here. Sum is the B term. The product is A times C. Okay, so the sum is B term is negative 10. Now be real careful with your negative signs, positive and negative signs, because they're important. Now the product is A, so it's 1 times negative 24. Which will give negative 24. So we have to think, what multiplies to negative 24 and adds to 10, to negative 10? So you go through the products of, the factors of 24, remembering that 1 will be positive and 1 will be negative to get negative 24. And you can try a few. If you're not, if it takes a little while, you can just write down a little organized list, like 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. And then remember that one of the numbers will be negative and see which one adds up to negative 10. Um, and it turns out these numbers, if we try those combinations, uh, it's going to be 12 and 2 that will work. You might think that 6 and 4 will work, but it turns out the signs don't work, so it will come out wrong. But if we have 12, we're gonna, it's going to be negative 12 and positive 2. Because negative 12 times 2 is negative 24. Negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10. So those worked. Okay, now I'm going to take, again, my B term, and I split it into these two parts. Minus 12x plus 2x minus 24. And now I group my first two terms, and I look for the largest common factor there, which is just x. And in fact, for all these questions where we just have 1x squared, the largest common factor of the first half will be just x. Um, so we've got x times what? x times x will give us x squared. And x times negative 12 will give us negative 12x. And then we group the second part here. Um, and remember, actually, I did, forgot to mention this earlier. Um, but we have just have these two different things that we're adding together. Sometimes we might be subtracting them. Um, so it's important to remember to put this plus sign here. Uh, if you don't write it, it'll mean we're multiplying, which we're not. That if we did multiply, it would come out to something much larger. Okay, so now we look for common factors here, and they're both even. They're both divisible by 2. So it's 2 times x and 2 times negative 12. There we go, and that was the magic again, because uh, those both came out exactly the same. So, our factored form of this. We have a whole lot of x minus 12s, and in fact we have x of them and then two more of them, so it's x plus 2. Okay, and then I'll do one more. So, write down my little SPN abbreviation for the sum of product and numbers. The sum is going to be the B term, and here that's negative 1, because we have negative 1y. product is going to be a times c, so it's 1 times negative 20, which is negative 20. And then we go through all the different things that multiply to negative 20, um, and we're looking for some that also add to negative 1. And so 5 and 4 are 1 away from each other, so that will give us, because the signs are different, that will give us a sum of negative 1. We just have to check the signs. 5 and 4. If we want them to add to negative 1, we'll use negative 5 and positive 4. Okay. Um, so here, y squared. And I'll rewrite my minus y as minus 5y plus 4y. And then minus 20. Okay. And now I'll uh, take a common factor out of my first two terms. So they both have a factor of y. So it's going to be y times y to get y squared, and y times negative 5 to get negative 5y. And then here I remember my plus sign, or minus sign if we have a minus. And then here the common factor, in fact they both have a common factor of 4. So it'll be 4 times y to get 4y, and then 4 times it'll be negative 5 to get negative 20. 
Okay. So that worked out perfectly. Those are both exactly the same. So I have y minus 5 times y plus 4. Okay. Uh, bye.